Hello, this is Seher from Easy Peasy, and the topic we are going to discuss today is called as post-translation modification of proteins. Now, protein modifications can be of two different types. One is called as co-translational modification, and one is called as post-translation modification. The difference between the two is if the process of modification or changing of one or more amino acid in a protein starts while they are still attached to the ribosome, that part is called as co-translation modification. As you can see in this picture that this protein is still attached to the ribosome and ribosome is still moving along the messenger RNA, but these chaperones start attaching themselves with this protein and start folding it into the tertiary and quaternary state. Now, folding comes under the category of modification. So, this type of protein modification is called as co-translational modification. On the other hand, post-translation modification means that once the process of translation is ended, the protein is no longer attached itself to the ribosome, and now the process of changing of one or more amino acid or attachment of a non-protein part occurs to this protein, now this type of modification is called as post-translation modification. Now let's start with the general thing, that is the amino terminal modification. As we know that when the process of translation starts, the first codon is called as AUG and it codes for methionine. If it's a eukaryotic organism, it will be methionine, and if it's a prokaryotic organism, then it might be informal methionine. In both situations, methionine is the first amino acid that is generated always in a protein. But if we talk about a protein like collagen, we don't have methionine in this collagen protein. We only have three amino acids in collagen, that is glycine, proline, and lysine. It means that the terminal amino acid, that is methionine, is terminated or cut off from that protein by the enzymes called proteases. Now, when the proteases come in handy, the methionine will move apart from that protein, and that protein will go under the process of tertiary and quaternary state in order to make it active. The second type of modification that we are going to talk about is called as trimming of signal sequence. Now, protein, when it comes out of the process of translation, is non-active. And the first 15 to 30 amino acid that is present on N-terminal of that protein is called a signal sequence. This signal sequence is going to recognize that whether this protein is going to function inside the nucleus, inside the chromoplast, inside the mitochondria, peroxisomes are going out of the cell in the form of vesicles. Once that part is done, the signal sequence need to get terminated in order to make this protein active and perform its function. Let's take a real life example. So in this case, I'm taking insulin structure. When the insulin will form by the process of translation, it will be called as pre-pro-insulin. And as you can see in this picture, this pink portion is A chain. This green portion is the C-peptide chain, this blue portion is the B chain, and this orange portion is the N-terminal signal peptide. Now, this N-terminal signal peptide will take this protein into the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, once the location is decided, the N-terminal signal peptide is removed from it. Now the protein is called as pro-insulin and it doesn't have that signal sequence. Still, this protein is inactive because it is not insulin, it is pro-insulin. So the process of trimming will further done on this protein and the attachment of disulfide bond will occur. Now in the Golgi apparatus, the process of trimming will be done and the active insulin will be released to perform its function while the C-peptide is a protein that will get degraded after some time. So insulin is a perfect example of trimming. Covalent modifications. Now as we know that protein will go under the process of covalent modifications and these modifications can be phosphorylation, acetylation, disulfide crosslinking, carboxylation, methylation, and hydroxylation. Let's take a polypeptide chain and see how these covalent modifications are occurring on it. Now this is a beautiful picture showing us all the covalent modifications on this polypeptide chain. So start with the N-terminal chain, we can see that the phosphorylation is occurring on serine amino acid. 
followed by lysine that is attached with the acetyl group and the modification is called as acetylation. When we move forward, we will find cysteine that is making disulfide cross-linking with the other cysteine molecule in this polypeptide chain. Now further along, we can see a proline that is attached with hydroxy group and this process is called as hydroxylation. When we move forward, we can see arginine is attached with methyl groups here and that is called as methylation. Now methylation can be di or trimethylation depending on two or three methyl group attached to that amino acid. Further along, the last amino acid in this polypeptide chain is glutamine that is attached with the carboxyl group here and the process of modification is called as carboxylation. The function of each cobalt modification is different depending on the type of protein it has. Now let's take the real life example of all these type of modifications and see how this modification is affecting their function. The first modification is phosphorylation of casein protein. Casein is a protein that is present in the milk and it is usually helps the attachment of calcium ions within our bone. Now if we look closely at this protein, we can see that it has a lot of serine amino acid and the serine amino acid is attached with phosphate group here. So the process of phosphorylation is occurring on serine here and that is helping the attachment of calcium ions with that protein. That's how the calcium is attached to our bones and make us stronger. Acetylation of microtubules. Microtubule is present in every cell. They have numerous functions but the main function is present on mitosis and meiosis where the chromosome attach themselves with a the spindle fiber. Now the microtubules have the major modification and that is acetylation. Let's take two examples here. The first microtubule doesn't have the acetylation modifications while the other picture has the acetylation modifications in it. If a crack or damage occur at one part of this microtubule, the acetylation will occur on lysine that is present on the position 40. If the slicing is present, it will resist the microtubule to bend and it will help in the process of repair system. While on the other hand, if there is no acetylation occur at this point, this crack will go bigger and results in the breakage of microtubule. Methylation of histone protein. As we know, histone proteins are present inside the chromosome in the form of a nucleosome in which eight histone proteins are surrounded by DNA molecule. Now these histone proteins are playing a major role in the process of transcription. As you can see, these histone proteins have tails here and these tails are modified with methyl group here. All the green modifications of methylation is showing us that when the methyl group is attached to these parts, they will activate the gene for the process of transcription. And if methylation is occurring on the red areas or the red positions of lysine amino acid, then it will halt the process of transcription. So the major function of histone protein is to act as a regulator for the process of transcription. Hydroxylation of collagen protein. As we know that the collagen is the main protein in our body. It is present in our nails, in our cartilage, in our bone, in our skin, in the connective tissue, in our hair as well. So collagen have three different type of amino acid that is highly modified with the hydroxyl group in it. When hydroxy group is attached to each polypeptide chain, this collagen can convert itself into the tropocollagen or cross-linked form in order to perform its function. But if this collagen will not get modified with this hydroxyl group like in this picture, then they will not go in the form of collagen, rather they will get degraded. And if it gets degraded, then it will affect our skin, our nails, our hair, or any part where the damaged or degraded collagen is present. Disulfide cross-linkage of IgG protein. IgG is basically the antibody that is present inside our body that is a defensive system of our cells against bacteria or any outsider like virus. Now if we look closely at the structure of this antibody, we will find a lot of interchain disulfide bonds in the green shade here. Now these interchain disulfide bond is helping this protein to be in its shape and perform its function. Carboxylation of prothrombin protein. Prothrombin is basically present in our blood vessel and it helps in blood clotting. 
If we look closely at the structure of prothrombin, we can see a lot of carboxyglutamate residues that is present at the end terminal of this protein. And it helps the attachment of calcium ion that is necessary process to initiate the process of blood clotting. Glycoproteins. Glycoprotein means that a non-protein part that is carbohydrate is attached itself to a protein. We have two different types of linkage here. One is called as O linkage and that is done on the amino acid that is serine and threonine. Carbohydrate is a really big family. So there will be mannose, galactose, glucose in it. And the attachment of these carbohydrates can be seen in this picture. The other type of linkage is called as N linkage and that is usually occur on asparagine. Lipoproteins. Lipoprotein means that the lipid attach itself to a protein. All those proteins that need to attach themselves with the cell membrane, either inside or outside, they need a part of lipid family to attach itself to that particular protein in order to do that. Because lipids are hydrophobic in nature and the attachment of protein to that cell membrane cannot be done without the attachment to the lipid family. Now we have three different types of linkage. One is called as palmitol group on internal cysteine or serine group and meristol group on amino acid that is glycine, farnesol group on carboxy terminal of cysteine. With these three different types of attachments with the lipid, the protein anchor itself with the cell membrane. Nucleoprotein. Nucleoprotein by its name is telling us that these protein is attached themselves with a non-protein part and that non-protein part is a DNA. Histone is a perfect example of nucleoprotein because DNA attached itself to the histone proteins in it. Metalloproteins. Metalloproteins by the name is telling us that the attachment of a metal ion as a cofactor occurs in that process. The perfect example of metalloprotein is hemoglobin. As we know that in hemoglobin, we have the metal ion that is iron in that case in the form of a heme group. Chromoproteins. Chromoprotein means that a non-protein part that is usually called as prostatic group attaches itself to a protein and changes the color of that protein. Again, the perfect example of chromoprotein is hemoglobin because the attachment of iron ion to this protein gives red color to our blood cells. Protein folding. Protein folding is another type of protein modifications after the protein is translated. There are two different types of protein. One is done by itself and one needs a helper protein called a chaperone. Chaperone attach themselves with this protein and help it to fold in a correct form. As you can see in this picture, this is the unfolded protein. It goes into the chaperone and chaperone make it in a native active stage by folding it in the correct position. Last but not least, protein degradation. Protein degradation is also done when the protein is translated. Sometimes the protein translation is not done properly and sometimes the external factor are damaging that protein. In that case, the protein will go under the process of degradation. Now degradation will be done when a ubiquitin chain will attach itself to that protein. As you can see in this picture, these are the two proteins and they need to get degraded. And this is the ubiquitin chain that is attached itself to it, giving signals to the proteasome to recognize that protein that needs to get degraded. Once the attachment of ubiquitin chain is occurring, the proteasome will come and degrade that protein into the amino acid and that protein will lose its function. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.